Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up and we glorify you. You are King of glory. We are yours. You are ours. We need you. We love you. Pour out your spirit. Meet with us in this place today, O Abba. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Father. Live in us. Help us to see righteousness and sin. Help us to always be close to you. We need you in this time more than ever. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, my name is Philip Blair. Thank you for welcoming us. I'm an evangelist, a missionary. We've traveled to almost 40 countries. We preach in every type of way that you can think of. We preach on the streets. We preach in churches. We've preached crusades. We've preached on trains and on top of vans. In every type of situation, we've been there to preach. And that is my desire. My goal is no matter where you go in the world, you're going to hear someone preaching the gospel. You see, the gospel is not a secret message that we are to keep hidden from the world inside the four walls of a church. The gospel must go forth. But who will go if not us? Who will preach if not us? Who will obey if not us? And if we don't obey, do we understand the implication of our sin? When we sin, we fall short. We, we miss the mark we transgress God's law and he said if you love me keep my commandments and he has compelled us to go out he has called us to go and preach how dare we not go and sin when we disobey do we, do we agree that when we disobey God it is sin amen so if we don't obey we are in sin and sin separates us from God and if we are not his, our sin has separated us and we need to be reconciled back to God. And we are reconciled by the sacrifice of Jesus. Receiving his grace freely and being restored to righteousness so that we can love him so much say I will never disobey you and of course we are human beings we make mistakes but we should never rest Lord I will obey you because I love you that much you see we don't obey to be loved by God we obey because we love God. Obedience is not the ingredient. You see, if we're cooking a stew, and this stew is called acceptance from God, acceptance doesn't have to include obedience. Acceptance comes from grace. 
We put in a little bit of grace. We put in some repentance. We put in some transformation of the heart. You said, you see, he has said, I will give you a new heart of flesh. So we put in some transformation. We put in a little bit of surrender of the soul. And we humble ourselves before God. And we get the stew of acceptance. And we taste it and it's good. And we say, God, you are so good to me. I have to obey you. Because it's the only thing important to me. I must obey you. I don't want to sin against my God. Because he has been so good to me. So we don't obey to be accepted. We obey because we're accepted. If you're a fruit tree, you don't have to try to be a fruit tree. You understand? The Bible says, let's, let's go here. Let's go. Psalm chapter 1. Verse 3, somebody read it. I'll read it first. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Let's continue. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. <laughs> Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Sin separates us from God. If we are living in rebellion and sin, we must be born again. When God gives us new life, he washes the sin away. So even if we make a mistake from time to time, we continually repent. God restores us to our rightful place seated with Christ in heavenly places. And we are children of the Most High God. We are trees of righteousness. You're not a sinner. You're not a, a spiritual orphan. You have a father in heaven who has saved you by his grace because we have no grace of our own we cannot save ourselves we'll never be good enough for God so we need to stop stop trying to be good enough for God rest in Jesus he did the work so you don't have to we say hold up brother this is the point where a lot of people go mm, well you see it is our nature to think God didn't do enough. So we got to say, well, God did eh, almost everything. But we got to do this much. But you see, Jesus did everything. We do have a responsibility. We must obey. We must love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
But our ability to obey, the grace God gives us to have a desire to obey. The gifts of God is given us to use in the world. It all comes from God. Your desire to obey God must come from God. Your ability to obey God must come from God. That's why you can't try to be a fruit tree. You're either a tree of righteousness or you are a child of the devil. You will never be good enough for God. That's why John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he might increase. The more that we know we are nothing, the more we understand God is everything. When I know that I'm nothing, and God is everything in my life, and he tells me to walk into a group of violent terrorists and preach the gospel, I'm not going to fear or cling to this life because I'm nothing. What am I holding on to if I am nothing? What value does a jar of clay hold? This much. It's what's inside the jar of clay. Are you a tabernacle of the Holy Spirit of God? Are you a are you a temple of his glory? Does his presence live in you? If he does, then you have power. Power to overcome. Not be defeated. We're here in victory. To go out and labor to bring in the harvest. So it's what we live by. But before we can be in victory to bring in the harvest, we must be reconciled back to God. Because sin will separate you from Him. But if you're a tree of righteousness, you're going to be a fruit tree. So let me explain. What the need is it? Can a fruit tree be anything other than what it is? Can a fruit tree be a, an app or be a, a dog? Can it be a blade of grass? Can it be a cloud? Is it trying to be anything other than a fruit tree? No. Does a fruit tree try to bear fruit? Does it have to labor to do what it's created to do? Does it struggle and toil? A fruit tree will bear fruit because that's what it was created to do. And we obey God because that's what we're created to do. But sin has separated us from our God. We must be reconciled back to God. And by His power and in His glory we have obedience. You don't have to fight in the flesh. You're going to fail every time. Walk in the spirit where there is freedom to be found. Obedience will never be found in the flesh. Obedience comes by way of relationship with God. Knowing who you are in relationship to who he is. Because without God, we're nothing. But we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. So when he lives in us, we become something. 
Because if we are a jar of clay and inside of that jar is infinite value, the jar of clay now becomes of infinite value. To understand. To understand. The jar of clay, you and me, the value is very little. But the presence of God in us from glory to glory we become something because he is everything in us. Can, can somebody find me a napkin or something? Just something to wash my... Oh, okay. Do you understand? We have to stop trying to be what we already are. And if we're trying and failing to be a fruit tree, then maybe the problem is we need to realize we're not yet a fruit tree. If we're trying to bear fruit, we're trying to obey, trying to do good things, trying to go out and use our gifts, and we're failing in every area, and our life is a mess, maybe we are not yet a fruit tree. We must consider the truth. This life is difficult. Difficult days will always be. And we labor and we fight. But we trust. We abide in the Lord. God will bear the fruit in your life. And he will bless you in such a wonderful way. Thank you. Obedience will always cost a price. But he'll always give you what you need to pay. And he'll give you more grace. And if he's going to ask more of you, He'll give you the strength to stand. Let's open Isaiah chapter 59. Let me get some water. You okay? All right, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you. Oh, excuse me. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. You see, Isaiah was speaking to the Israelites. And judgment was coming. And surely it was already at the door. And he's talking about deliverance of his people. But you see, we have to seek God for us to find him. If we're out in the darkness, and we're seeking things that do not please him we will reap the destruction our sin deserves but his grace is sufficient for us for in our weakness he his power is perfected 
I confused myself for a second. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Our iniquities have separated us from God. If we are His, we walk in righteousness. A fruit tree that bears good fruit. We're not going to be walking in iniquity. We can know that we are not separated from our God. This is the world. And the kingdoms who have gone astray. And the judgment of God sits waiting for the command. And his angels are in place. And when God speaks, judgment surely comes. You see, God only needs to speak. And he has servants who do his will. Where are those who will go? Who will obey no matter the cost? Who are saying, God, prune me. Take. You know prune? Mm -hmm. Prune? Okay. Take from me what I don't need to have. <inaudible> Remove from me the sin. <inaudible> the waywardness and rebellion. <inaudible> the backsliding. <inaudible> the unbelief and the doubt. <inaudible> I want to be hungry for you. <inaudible> Desperate for you. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you, O God. When I am too weak to stand, my God will hold me up. In difficult days, in darkness, He will give me the light to shine. I have not been separated from my God. I have confidence to stand because his righteousness dwells in me. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 12, sorry. Chapter 12. Verse 1. Wherefore, Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Basi, na sisi pia mokua, tunazugukwa na wingu kubwa la mashaidi, namna hii, na tuweke kando kila mzigo mzito na dhambi ile ituzingayo, kwa upesi, let us lay aside the weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Sin will weigh us down. Sin burdens the soul. It's hard for us to have joy to walk in peace when we know that we're doing things we shouldn't be doing. Even if it's small, and certainly if it's big, sin is sin unto God. We have to get rid of all of it because we love him that much. If we are his, we must walk in truth and righteousness to pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. 
na kuidharau aibu na ameketi mkono wa kuume wa kile cha enzi cha Mungu Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You see, sometimes the storms of life come, and the wind is like a hurricane, and the roots of the tree start getting pulled up a little bit, and we might feel like our faith is weak. Trials and testing. Oh God help me. Oh Mungu nisaidie. I need your love. I'm falling. I'm hurting. I feel so broken. I need you. And the Lord of the harvest. He comes. He digs up the ground. Carefully puts the roots back into the soil. Make sure the foundation is firm and good. Gives us fresh water. Renews our soul. Gives us joy once again. You see, tears last for a night. But joy always comes in the morning. If you sow in tears, you will surely reap in joy. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that is taking us away from God. And let us run to our God, the author and finisher of our faith, who endured the cross, despising the shame but who is also set down at the right hand of God. In verse 3, it talks about we- being weary and faint in our minds. See, a lot of times we, we get weary and faint. Say, well, I, I know it's true. I read it. I believe it. God, I cannot deny your truth. I know that what you say is true. But I don't see it. And I know something's wrong. You see, this is where it gets difficult. Because I believe there are many, many children of God who truly want to believe every word. And our eyes see it and know it to be true. But something inside of us doubts. Maybe we don't doubt it for pastor. But we doubt it for us. Well, we we know that God's given pastor victory. But I don't see see my victory. I don't see my deliverance. And as the Israelites wandering in the desert, they couldn't see their way. Go back to chapter 11. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, what we can see with our eyes already manifested that comes from God is the result of faith. If you can see it, faith has already done its work. Faith is knowing something to be true, believing it with all our hearts, even when we can't see it. 
So if God says, Philip, I want you to go and build a church. Say, God, I don't have any money. I have absolutely nothing. I don't even know how I'm going to eat. Do we believe? What our eyes is telling us is that it's impossible. But what does my Bible say? With God, all things are possible. So I want to ask you today, is my God a liar? Does God lie? Does he ever lie? God forbid. So if God is saying do it, and my eyes are saying it's possible, then, then my eyes are lying. What I see is not true. Noah God told him to build an ark. Did God give him everything he needed before? Or did he say walk in faith? And just as Brother Stanley said the other day, if I have to build one square of concrete at a time, I'm going to obey my God. But you see, Stanley has a church. Because my God is not a liar. Amen. 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 He could have believed what his eyes told him. But instead he went and prayed. Are you a child of God? If you are, you have direct access to the throne of grace. And you can ask your father anything that you need. If you need it, and it's his will, and if he has given you a command, surely it is his will. Then he will provide. We must be careful. Don't go try to build a church if God didn't tell you to build a church. Because God is not with you in that. But if it's his will and he directs you, he's not going to leave you stranded halfway through. Unless you get off the path somewhere. Stay on the path. Obey the Lord. Walk in faith. Don't believe your eyes. Say, God, I believe. No matter what I see, I believe. And I'm going to stand on the promises of God. I will have faith that these mountains will move in my life. And he will give me what he has promised me. Because we know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He takes care of his sheep. And it's not God's will for you to suffer unnecessarily. Sometimes God calls us to seasons of suffering. Trials and testing. But if you've been suffering the last 20 years, something is wrong. God has not called you to that. My God is a provider. And if he's been failing you for 20 years, something is wrong. You might not belong to him. And it's time to get saved. You might have doubt. It's time to believe. You might be walking in defeat. It's time for you to claim your victory. I beg you. 
Pray and find out what's wrong. My God has been faithful. And every brother I have ever met who has truly walked with him faithfully my God has been good to. Amen? Can you testify, brother? Yes. Amen. Can you testify? Amen. Can you testify? Amen. My God is good. He's not going to leave you stranded by the wayside. He's not going to leave you crying without bringing someone to wipe your tears. My God is faithful. Do you believe? Let us run to the throne of Jesus. Let us run to the feet of Christ. Running away from our sin. Forsaking yesterday. Leaving in the past what needs to remain in the past. The doubt and the fear belong back there somewhere. My tomorrow is one of faith. And I believe. I trust my God. And I claim his promises for my life. And I'm going to obey him because I love him. Because he saved me when I didn't deserve it. And for some reason he chose to live in me. And I know. I know. That I know. That I know. That he loves me. Do you believe? Say, I know Jesus loves me. I know Jesus loves me. Because sometimes we doubt. We feel so alone. So, so far forsaken. So broken. He's there. He loves you. Get through that season of suffering. Keep climbing that mountain. So when you get to the mountaintop, you can look down on your enemies below. You can say, my God is greater. He's greater. He has given me victory over my enemies. My God is faithful and he loves me. You see, we can't stay at the top of the mountain. The enemy, the, the enemy below, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. The enemy is the darkness. We got to go wage war against the enemy. So we take some rest and victory. We glorify the God, excuse me, we glorify our God on top of the mountaintop. But we keep pressing forward to the valley below. And this walk of faith is mountains and valleys. Season after season. In plenty. And when things aren't going so good. Full of joy. When we can't see how we're going to make it another day. He's faithful. We remain faithful. God will get you there. Let's finish this race together. Let's walk in victory. Let's claim the harvest. We got to fill the barns with souls. So that we can all be with Jesus in eternity. You see, he's coming back. He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And I long for new Jerusalem. Let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would carry away the burden on our souls. Send your angels to minister unto us, O God. Holy Spirit, come have your way in this place. Father, we, we just pray that your presence would, uh, would, would, would be manifested. Excuse me. We pray that your, your presence would be manifested. Hear our voice. Come close to us. Use us. We know that we are loved. Help us to feel your love. We know that we have grace. Help us to experience your grace. Save us. If there is anyone here, Father, who does not know you, save them. Help them to have confidence in who they are in Christ and who Christ is in them. You live in your people. Save your people. Bear much fruit in us, O God. We claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just want to give an altar call real quick. In every church I go, I always want to make sure I give an opportunity for people to, to follow Jesus. And if you've been walking through life, but you don't know him, now is your time. Do not delay. Don't go one more day. We will rejoice with you. The grace of God in our life is such a beautiful thing. Claim what is yours. If you need Jesus, please come. Only those who want salvation. If you need prayer, we will pray for you after this segment. If you need Jesus, please come. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just want to give a couple of minutes. If you're afraid, don't be. If you're afraid, God will give you strength. Please come. If just one of you come, others will follow. Just come. Amen. 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 Father, Baba, burden our hearts. Lord, if there are any here who need healing, deliverance, Lord, we can do nothing. I have no power. I feel so weary. But your grace is sufficient. Heal your people. Deliver us from evil. Break the power of the enemy. Give us breakthrough. Be with us in this place today, O oh Father. In Jesus' name. Okay, if you need prayer, please come. Please come.